buffalobrotherhood.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a fantastic day. It was a holiday all day today, and I was a good boy all year long, and I was finally rewarded with the gifts underneath my Im- Im- imaginary Christmas tree. This is the Bobcast, <laughs> the Buffalo Brotherhood podcast, number 81. And 91. I'm 90. Nine, listen to 81. All right. And you got heard, that right. We're and the, we're 91. Starting off good. I'm Ryan, and alongside me always is Mike. And across the table from him is Doug. In a dapper hat. Yeah. If you are not watching on the YouTube channel. You have to toot, stop listening in the audio feed. Go to the YouTube channel and check out um, his Boba Fett hat. Which he may or may not have killed somebody to get. Can you pin the bill? I got no. <laughs> you refuse to. I refuse to. You realize that that's like a, a cultural statement that you're making right now. Yes, but I don't care. <laughs> I paid too much money for it. I don't want to damage it. Maybe you, did you already take the tags off of it? Yeah, it's I'm going to keep it. It's, it's worthless, worthless now. now. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I, if you're a member I got, of the hip hop movement in East LA. You do not take your tags off your leather hat. Yeah, I know. I told Courtney last night because she started to. It had a great big gold one on it, it and leather? she started to peel it off. And I was like, "No, no, no, don't do that." She's like, "Why wouldn't you take the tag?" I'm like, "Trust me, you don't take the tag off." Is it leather? No, it's it's a normal hat, but it's got like a. No, no, it's not a normal hat. It's got like a <laughs> plasticky type. Coating. It looks like oh, Boba Fett's yeah. helmet. It looks like Boba Fett's helmet. Oh, oh, it was in your hands. You had the opportunity. You could have made it right. Oh, it's got Boba on the inside too. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yep. No, I got hat. I got so many compliments. On, it was weird. Like Courtney was dressed up with her R two D two dress and had the blue <laughs> hair and looked, looked way looked, looked way fabulous. better than I did. Yeah. And she got, uh, she had a few people tell her, you know, really good. But I just had all these guys, all the dude, that hat is so awesome. I love that what hat. They Where'd you to get say it? Was bend the bill. That hat is almost so awesome. If you would just bend the bill. Nope. All right. Okay. I'm not bending any more bills. That's right. <laughs> no uh, more. We saw Star Wars today. Star Wars episode today, seven. Today we saw it two hours ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it started, started two hours. Two, like, ago. Two hours ago. Uh, we have just left the theater, and we are here. We're going to talk about Star Wars: The Force Awakens, episode seven, and all that it contains. So, if you are attempting to stay incredibly spoiler free, and you haven't already seen the movie, well, then you're probably not going to want to listen to this podcast no, right now. No, just don't, don't listen. Don't, to just it. don't yeah, listen because we are going to spoil things. We're we are going to talk, talk about, about the whole movie, plot points, and character development and what we saw and what we enjoyed what we didn't enjoy which honestly is going to be a very short list very small if you are trying to avoid that stop you won't hurt my feelings you've already downloaded so thanks for the download come back and listen to it after you see it exactly and then let us know what you think and see if we hit the marker right and if you want to come on and defend your statements that might be against ours shoot us a email over at buffalo brotherhood at gmail.com and uh and uh, we'll get you on the show here, and we can talk about it. Yeah, unless I we'll, just we'll discuss like it and opinion. tell you that you're wrong. Exactly. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, or join the conversation at Facebook.com/slash Buffalo Brotherhoods. Do, right. do you have the folder of questions? I did not. Uh, Mike okay. and I talked about it. I think what we need we to do. We just need to. We need. To, we need to. We need to come off this. Okay. High. I think. I think that'll be good for because the next recording that we'll do. Yeah, that won't be until January seventh is when we'll record. Okay. So we've I, had a few more times have seen it. That'll be two weeks. That that's three weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. that's three weeks. We are outside the spoiler zone. Mm-hmm. We can talk about it all we want at that point. Okay. With and, the prop bets is what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right. yeah. We can talk about everything that we we uh, set up there, and, and then, then we will have had a few more times to see it, and everyone and, can listen right. to it. And if you haven't seen it by then. You're gonna. You've already been spoiled. Okay. And I think uh, Doug Fan's gonna come back on. Okay. That's when we should have him on, since All he was right. part of that. He was part of that, and then he actually uh, has shared with me over these last couple of weeks, like some of his uh, Star Wars memorabilia collection, which is vast, and we didn't even get to talk about that last okay. week. Okay. Let's talk about how big of a fan he really is. Oh, uh, he's a big fan. I showed up to school to have lunch with my daughter. Mm-hmm. And he also is a teacher, and um, 
And I'm standing in line with a bunch of kindergartners waiting to leave the gym, you know, yeah. following their path and all that stuff. And I, and I look up and, and they're stuck. I didn't even see him come up. He was like, hey, man. I was like, hey, what's up, man? How are you doing? And before anything else came out of his mouth is, hey, did you see that article that I put online? Did you see that? Because he was like right on top of it. Was talking about talking about the movie like right then. Like did uh, no conversation before him, which is awesome, which dur- is fantastic. Yeah, during the show, I sat between friend of the show Jake and friend of the show Doug. Now, and all like uh, the whole time, it was like they were planning how the Buffalo Brotherhood was going to have a booth at uh, Indiana Comic Con. Uh, and I was like, wait, good. wait, hold, hold, um, wait, hold. I can't. What we don't. Um, uh, okay, sounds guys, like we, okay, we guys. just need to get out of their way. Yeah, that's what I was. Sounds thinking. like we need some progressive thought in here. Yeah, absolutely. Some progressive. Need some new blood in the Brotherhood. Well, they're in. They're oh, in. that's right. Okay. Uh, we don't... Uh, uh, when we... T- just so, some show notes here, some formatting notes. We are going to be out of your ear holes for a little bit. It's going to seem probably longer than what it would be. Uh, but it's the holidays. Uh, Christmas is a week away. Yep. Approximately a week away. Is it a week or a week a and a day? A little bit more. It's a week and a day away or so. And uh, and then New Year's is going to be a week and away from that. So um, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to actually, we're not going to have a chance to sit down and record because we're celebrating the holidays with our families. And we want you to make sure that you're celebrating the holiday with your families. And uh, we just don't want to get in your way. And we honestly just can't make it work with our schedule. So we're not going to be back. And I know we've talked about this before, but we'll be back the week after the new year. So, uh, and, and hopefully... We'll be there, but the conversation should be live, and you should be sharing things with us on Facebook and things that come up and, and and so forth. But sometime during that little hiatus for us, that little two week window, three week window, I'm sure the three of us are going to sit down and get together and come up with some show show ideas for 2016. So if yep. you have yep. things that you want to see or suggest, or you want to be on the show, or you have a topic or something you want to to get out there, please, 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 please email the show, uh, Buffalo Brotherhood at Gmail dot com. <laughs> I almost messed it up. No, I love that we're talking about this after we told everyone not to talk to. Don't, That's true. Don't That's listen true. to this show because we're going to spoil everything. All right. But here's some information. Well, we can let them know again too at yeah. the January recording. So okay. let's get started. All, All right, right, let's, let's get, get on it. Because Star Wars just happened. You going to play some Star Wars music? Uh, no. Cause, oh, because we get content. Because YouTube, ID. right? Because okay, you, so. YouTube. Oh, I wonder if the ba, new soundtrack is on. Ba, 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 I just want to see ba, if it's available. Ba, 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 it should be. I'm sure I, I, everything's available. Well, now. it might not be streaming yet. I don't know. Okay, so uh, we had lots of bold predictions and lots of conversations over the past two years, gentlemen, of what we might see or what we might experience. Man. Let's go around the table first off and just say, uh, I mean, we, we can't give numbers. Uh, we can't give ratings because, I mean, Star Wars is one of my favorite, is my favorite franchise ever. So it's not. It's going to be a 10 regardless. But uh, maybe a little bit more constructive sort of... Um, what was the attributes of the movie that we saw? A general sort of rating or review, Doug. Um, I I would not call it uh, a perfect movie, but I would say you know it definitely it definitely gives Empire a run for its money. Really? Yeah. I I don't I don't think it surpasses Empire's the greatest of the. Star Wars films, but I would have to put it second, a very very close second. Hmm. So, um, I uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 still just trying to process everything, but uh, overall the flow of the movie, um, I think was you know really good. Um, there uh, just. Minor thing, really, just minor things that you know. I, I think the Rotten Tomatoes is like ninety four, ninety seven percent. I think that's probably reflective of of my own. You know, just a few little minor things here and there um, that really are in the in the scheme of things are inconsequential to the movie. You know, movie watching and enjoying uh, experience. So it uh, excellent, uh, excellent transition. You, you, the start of the handoff to the new, the newer generation. Um, not really any big surprises, which I think is okay. I don't think there was any like you know oh my gosh moments, um, but I don't think that you needed that for uh, the first episode. 
Um, Do you think surprises are still to come? Though? I think surprises are still to come. We're we're definitely left um, with a is at least one big unanswered question, um, and that's of course who is who? What is Ray's lineage? Um, you you learn Kylo Ren very quickly who his. Uh, which that might be an issue for some people, but I don't really care. I mean, I think everybody had an idea that he was a Skywalker of some variety, any serious Star Wars fan, so I don't really think that was an issue, revealing that right off the bat. So, overall, uh, excellent, excellent movie, um, and definitely worth all of the hype that it's been built up, uh, it's been built up with, and J.J., did an excellent job um, uh, putting, you know, his kind of take on it and uh, setting it up for uh, the next director. So, Mike, he's not directing the next movie. No, no. Ryan, 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 Ryan Johnson. Yeah, what has he directed? He was um, what the Looper guy. Yeah, was he, he was Looper? the Looper guy. He was. The oh, Looper that was guy. a good movie. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was fantastic. I thought it was it enjoyable all the way through there wasn't a, a lull in that movie that <laughs> that even took my mind away from it at all it no. was constantly had me enthralled in it um a lot of throwbacks a lot of throwbacks yeah and, and I was expecting that. I and mean, probably more that you we didn't even catch. Right, right. I'll probably catch even more, you know. I mean, there were small things like the um the the ball the training the ball. training ball did you catch that yeah. when when he pulled that out of the falcon like he was digging through some stuff and was and he found that um that was a that was pretty funny you know little things like that were really really good um new characters that showed up Maz Kanata was fantastic yeah oh wow that was a fantastic scene that the whole that whole thing when they're in her little um what is that a, a pirate the, girl. yeah yeah, yeah. I mean that was that was so good. She was she was that might be one of my favorite lines from the movie when she said she said I like that Wookie. That was that was really really well done. She almost gave me that vibe of um, in the Incredibles the oh the yeah girl, the lady that makes all their suits yeah the glasses yeah the yeah. glasses the size and, the and, size the and stuff. I mean I was kind of feeling that that part to it. Um, the uh, the plot twist that. I'll just say it that we completely, me and Ryan at least, um, agreed upon that was going to happen was that that um, that Han was going to die. Yep. And uh, Ec- done excellently. I it was expected the minute the minute that they stepped into the area that they were, and I think the minute that he says, "Meet me back here," mm-hmm. you knew it was coming, and then you saw the the um the bridge that they were on for for me why don't they put guardrails on anything in star wars i mean nothing has guardrails i think the moment that leia said go bring our son but that like right then i was like yeah, yeah. hans 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 toast see i had i had kind of a scary moment when the when chewie got shot i was like oh oh maybe we're wrong this might go another way that i didn't think was going to happen and that that caught me off guard for a second i think there. that was just a vice to get ray in the cockpit yeah and that did it it did a good job um it it fantastic the small things that i critiqued on it um i think c3po was too clean looking i think that was I, again I think that was intentional because I picked up on that as well. He was, was very, buffed very, out. very clean, and yeah. it kind of bugged me. It cut bugged but me I, a little bit. But I think like, you're supposed to show how far away from the action he is. Right? Get, yeah, yeah. That that's a good point, and I don't it know. It probably has been for a long time. Yeah, and then Carrie Fisher's voice. Yes, that bugged me a little. I don't. There I feel were, like she was pushing the old lady sound almost. Like well, she was, that's her natural voice. I so. know she's been through a lot of crap, you know, and I get that, but I, I feel like that that it was almost like a trained sound that she was trying to portray. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like she was trying to um, talk naturally. It almost felt it almost felt like a fake. When voice. she was when she was being softer, yeah, she sounded more normal more like Alea, but when she was being in more of the command right. type role and more aggressive you could sense that carrie fisher strain that you know the hard life that yeah. she's lived you could definitely hear that i mean she can't she can't mask that voice right 
I enjoyed I enjoyed a lot of the comedy that was more towards our generation than than um than previous Star Wars movies. You know when when uh when Poe and and Ren are, are facing each other and it's mm-hmm. quiet for a second. He goes, "So am I going to talk here?" And that was almost like a um a, a Star Lord kind of feel to him. Like I had that kind of interaction. Like that kind of offset comedy. It needed to be in that movie because that that's that stuff is what brought it i think more towards our generation like a style of movie it's the, it's the little things like that that they added yeah. to it um and it was funny like it there was were, there were lots there of were lots funny, of really really funny one parts. All, finn was hilarious but oh, that yeah. fit that fit was his character though with uh poe's yeah. character yeah i yeah. mean he clearly cocky, was the cocky pilot yeah yeah so i mean he it was that that part was that was great. Um, I I I like that they took they took Rin's mask off and that that humanized him a little bit, you know. And okay, question that I didn't get to ask you guys before we started recording. So when he hit himself when he was fighting Ray and Finn and he kept hitting himself in the side. So when he killed Han, did his like did no his, he got shot by Chewie? Chewie shot him. Oh. I missed that. And yeah. He was just he, I thought, he's psyching himself up. I yeah. thought what happened is, is he had his his lightsaber Mm-mm. there and his the side what are the the um the pauldrons? Yeah, uh, yeah, came out and got him uh-uh. like in the side. No, yeah. Chewie got pissed. Chewie and, got him. Yeah. Oh, another another thing. I, I expected a little bit more Wookiee rage at that. I was hoping you have to imagine that Chewie has lived through this whole entire situation and that. I mean, it's got to tear him up as much as it tears Han up to see Ben so right. down there doing this. So I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I was, there was a few things about Chewbacca that kind of threw me off because I love Chewbacca as a character and I love him as sort of a foil and the steady first mate and so forth. Right. But at the end of the movie, when all this is said and done, I would imagine he would be a ball of fur and tears. Yeah, and grief that was with, with Leia. That was one of my. Sticking point is they they kind of hang out with the pilots, leaving yeah. Ray and Leia by themselves. I felt I felt that the 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 Han using the bowcaster thing, they I feel like that needed to be played a little differently. Yeah, I would have thought by now he would have shot that at least yeah. once. Like he, I I would have felt I had the same. I kind of felt like if he should have shot it, he should have said. I should be shooting this thing more often or something like that. Like right. leading himself to say like, like you should let me use this thing more often. Something like that. Cause it did. It felt, it Quit felt too stingy, new. You furball. Yeah. It felt too new, like a new thing. Yeah. And, and he's had that bowcaster the whole time. Like that's not a new thing for them. And they've been together for years, you yeah. know, a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that, that kind of threw me, but overall, um, I'll go see it again. I'm going to go take the kids. I mean, I I'm I want to go see it in IMAX. I want to go see it with the kids. I want yeah. I'm I'm going to go see it if you I what I say four times in theaters. I'll probably hit that, especially now that I know it's playing in a pretty cheap theater really close to us. Um that really opens up that door. Um cuz now I've seen it on the big screen. I still want to go spend the big money go see it in IMAX, but to see it to really just suck it in, I won't mind seeing it in a smaller theater. I'm curious so, to see how much the movie slows down for us the second time, third time, fourth time we see it because I felt like it needs to slow down <coughs> for me to really get it. I loved the movie. I thought it was yep. phenomenal. Um, every piece of it, I mean, I felt strong with the story. Um, there were the things that we could nitpick apart altogether. Um, I feel like Ray. we're going to find out Ray is the daughter of Skywalker. Um, I feel like uh, uh, Ben Solo knows that more than more than probably any other. Character. Explain, explain. You guys caught this, and I didn't. And you guys, we talked about it in the car. Explain the part why you're why you guys are feeling that way. Uh, well, uh, Maz Kanata pretty much talks about it. That you know, that the, 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 you know, the lightsaber calls out to its family members, um, Anakin. Um, Luke, and then now Ray. Uh, and then there was a flashback sequence when she touched the right. lightsaber that showed sort of the destruction of the Jedi Temple or the new Jedi Order. So, um, so there's one of two things that could be that could either be her sensing Luke's, I guess, maybe memories, or that's actually her memories in an, and it. There's been some sort of mental. Okay, block. you know what I thought it was? I thought it was the Jedi children. 
What's that? I thought it was the Jedi children. I thought the cries out in pain. And yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I thought that was the kids that Anakin killed, the the younglings in the the Anakin. Well, killed. but if if you notice though, when she's in that first hallway, that was crying. When, he, he killed out a, a whole room. No, but yeah. there was only one yeah. kid crying when so she maybe, went downstairs. Maybe it was but her. when you, it, it, it her. looked to me like when it first started, she was in the hallway that Luke and Vader fought in right. on on, and then it twisted and turned, and it turned. Then it slowly. So I don't know if it was oh. all the memory. That it, it was like compiled memories attuned to the lightsaber through Anakin and Luke, and she and now through whatever happened with Kylo, or if it was just her memories that either Luke had put a mental block on her, or she had. I'm thinking. Put, I'm thinking she was her memory was essentially wiped for her protection, right? Um, and sort of blocked her ability to get access the Force. Because this is one of the things that a lot of people talked about up to the movie was like, is Leia going to be a Jedi? Is Leia going to be the Force? If you watch the the you know the original trilogy again, right? When Luke try when Luke leaves Dagobah with his training half complete, Yoda yeah. and Ben are both very concerned because uh-huh, that is right. the most dangerous position for any Jedi to be in. Right, a half trained Jedi. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just think without Leia being able to fully commit to what was going on. Any additional training she would have received would have put her in a more dangerous situation. And she still has feeling. I mean, when Han dies, she instantly, so instantly she feels it. So, does she feel that, or does she feel the the like what her son was going through? No. Probably, probably both. Because I do feel like Kylo slash Ben. I feel like he was conflicted. That wasn't all an act. He had one foot in each camp here, light versus the he, dark. Yeah, but but, but he the only used way, that to his advantage. I think I, I, I think he was pulling it. I don't. He think was he pulling knew. on on Han's heart strings to get him close enough to do that. I don't think he knew what he was going to do until he looked up and saw Ray Skywalker standing up there, and that guilt for what happened. Listen, listen to him. He already called her Ray Skywalker. I that guilt of seeing her there and what he's done and the path that he chose. I mean, somebody somebody who's caught in a lie goes either two way. They they break down and they you know seek forgiveness and they and they come to their senses and they admit what they've done wrong, or they or a narcissist or a spoiled brat or a, a petulant child digs in. Yeah. And goes deeper into that lie. So I think he has solely bought into this lie to the point that he refuses to admit that it's the wrong path, it's, even if he yeah. knows it. It really makes you want to know. Here's what I want to know, is where is the force ghost of Anakin Skywalker to tell this kid, I was wrong, and Luke brought me back? Well, why? Because he's, he's talking to the mask, and he's like, show me right. the dark side. So I, I wonder maybe if that's not Snoke, maybe we don't I'm get sure some kind is. of manipulation of Snoke imitating a Force ghost or something. Or, or well, I just think he's speaking. Uh, I mean, See, he doesn't know the whole truth. Now that leads me to that idea of maybe in the next movie we might see Hayden Christensen. Or, I think I, I think the rumors that he's been on set are probably true. Yeah, I think it's coming. Uh, I don't, and I don't know that it will be a. Cl- I don't think it'll be a clone. Yeah, I probably would maybe be a flashback of of some variety. I can't What's, see them bringing uh, Vader, Vader back in okay. any way. Although they did mention clones in this. Yeah, he did. He he mentioned you know we. we it's better than a clone instead, instead. Yeah, we should clone. The, we Kylo. Yeah, Kylo basically was insinuating clones would be better, and he's like, no, our troops, they take them at birth. The, yeah. the first order troops and What's basically that guy's name? I can't think of Hux. 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 Yeah. Sure and my Hux. God, what a just his speech that he gives. Yeah. He is so just you can tell this like the conviction that he has. It was good. It's like beyond evil. It's just like he is sold on whatever Snoke, Snoke is he's, pushing. He's Tarkin. He's you know No, he's he's beyond Tarkin. Tarkin was a crafty politician. Yeah, this dude is he is he's a he's a he, fanatic. Yeah, he is a fanatic. He'll he'll have a bigger role. And oh, I, yeah. I think Phasma. You talked about that before. I think Phasma will have a larger role later. It's just we need yeah. to we need to get this out in the open and then then maybe bring. It I back just in. thought she would maybe have a slightly. Lo- I don't know. Uh, maybe, I don't think she's ever going to be as tough or as 
you know, intimidating is maybe what you, we originally speculated. I think maybe they're. Do you think maybe they're trying to pull a, a kind of a fet? I think it's a grievous, a, a fet more of a character. grievous than a fet. Well, no, I'm saying, are are they trying to pull a uh, a character that's kind of in the background that yeah. ends up being this huge character kind of thing? Well, I thought she would be more of an enforcer type character, but she really wasn't really wasn't utilized at all in in that she just showed up after the fact kind and they really played her up like she's this powerful captain and i was like well, kind of bugged me to use her voice though i kind of feel like that character shouldn't have talked i didn't that would have made her more like just powerful but then how would she communicate any of those things yeah i the, the, the can we all right i i don't i'm <laughs> i feel like i'm like First and foremost, I just want to say this was amazing. Like yeah. I don't think oh. there's anything else I can say. And I know that the longer we talk about this, the more it might sound right. like we're starting to tear some of this stuff down and pick stuff apart. But let's let's focus on the positives here for just a moment. Okay. What um, what was your biggest positive for the movie then? Uh Poe. I love Poe. I think I think Poe has come out is be you talk about like a, a fat like character. Poe didn't have near as much role as what maybe we thought we, he may have, as as he was considered one of the big three. Oh uh, man, when he flew through and he got like, <laughs> what was that like ten? Twelve. I count twelve. Twelve tie fighters 14, and then fourteen if you count the two troopers that were on the ground. Yeah, he got those and caught the two around them uh-huh. standing there. Yeah, I mean that was awesome. That yeah. was a fantastic like fly through. Wedgie and Tilly's eat your heart out. Yeah. Yeah, but see, I think I think I think we talk about how Finn doesn't have the Force, like Finn will not be a Jedi or whatever. I'm not I'm not so certain that they all three don't have the Force. They are all doing things that are exceptional, whether it's attributed to the Force or just you know exceptional skill. We don't know, but who else but a Jedi could fly like that? Who else but someone relying on Jedi like skills could fly like that? I don't know, Rin turned and looked at i mean they're all doing what they're supposed to do and it was like that when finn was in his original stormtrooper outfit you're getting too heavy on one side though if you get so if you think finn has i think there is an awakening okay so you think, think there's the three you think all three of them well that think that's all three what, of them, then where's our then where's our that's three where i guys? thought that's where i thought originally when when it said force awakens that that's what they were saying is the force was rebirthing itself in these three characters right but then as it went along i'm like no nah, i don't i think ray is the only one that actually has the force on the on the good side i and as we kind of learn more through the trailers and that played out to be correct but you know, it, it could be. You know, maybe they're maybe they have some force I don't sensitivity. Think so. But I think you're put. I think you're getting too much weight on one side. I feel you're like they're building up have this. I feel like they're building up a romantic interest between Ray oh, and are. Finn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you know, maybe that'll go somewhere. And there's progeny there. I don't know. Um, but I will say, I was glad to see that they use that character. I was afraid that he was going to be diminished and wouldn't get a lot of screen time, but I think that he actually had a, a much, almost just the right amount of screen time for him. Finn or Poe? Uh, Poe. I could have taken a whole Poe movie, I'll be honest. You might get one. Yeah, he maybe. He was funny. He was funny. He, he, he might be in the Rogue One movie. And he seemed like a, really? As they said, R1. No, Rogue oh. One, that's in the past. That's, he's not even alive. Oh, yeah. So... Okay, so uh, Poe is yours. For me, um, Kylo Ren. But I mean, bar none. He what a fantastic, what a fantastic character. The way that he played him as this, like Ryan had said, this whatever it was that turned him into this spoiled. He is he is what I imagined Anakin to be. You yeah. know, he is, he is just, when he's throwing yeah, the a, tantrum, like he's yeah. literally throwing and they, a there's, tantrum. There's your little comedic relief again. He's throwing that tantrum there and those stormtroopers storm troopers. come around the corner and they hear him and they turn around and walk see, away. Here's, like to me, that speaks volumes too. Yeah. They're aware. Yeah. Like this isn't the first time. They know yeah. happen all the time. Just, They're uh, like, oh, uh, that's kilter. the guy with the mask. We're going the other way. And, but just the way that like he, first of all, how the force, how he uses the for- I love how they go from the force being, you know, in the, the original trilogy, the force was smoother. But when he uses the force, it's just like, 
Mm. And there's that like almost horror movie kind of yeah. hold you in static, like when he stops the blaster rifle, when That's he stops amazing. Ray. That was great. And then did you catch it at the after? Yeah. Like he walks away and it hits. And that then he pile. finally lets it go. And, yeah. But he's just his his command of the force is so crude and but powerful. I mean, clearly it's powerful, but the, it's unshapen. He's just a blunt extremely blunt object for the force but and but he knows he knows he uses that to good effect right you know like he knows how to use his powers for interrogation and like when he's when they're sitting there he's sitting there you know on the on the room you know on the same torture the floor of the torture chamber just looking right. at him you know like on and then when it, the, the, I think one of the best was when he took off the mask yeah. to inter to interrogate Ray, and just the, the cre like the creepiness factor of but the you guy. Could feel you could feel the fear. You could feel that fear, and you could see it in his face. That actor when she threw when she did, threw it back when 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 he started realizing he's like oh crap I'm not gonna get what I want and. Right, something's coming off of her. You could see it in his face. Like they didn't even have to say anything. You could tell no, that he was. That's what I'm to saying. Work. He he did a good. He job. did such a good job of creating that character. It just makes me want to know what in the what in the world happened. What in the world happened to him as a teenager? What is it? Luke's fate was it? Luke's failing as a teacher because, as Ryan said, he was not trained up right as a proper Jedi. Was it his failing as a teacher, or was it like Leia says, or, or Leia or Han? There was too. There's too much Vader in him. And Which again, it, sort of leads me back to why would Luke not spread the redemption story? Why would Luke not tell his sister he did not die like that in the end? Because that's that's one of that's Vader's last request. So I mean, that's you know, tell Leia, tell your sister, tell you your were sister, right. you were right. So why would so he, why would so so it doesn't matter if there's Vader in him well, or that not. doesn't mean that he didn't. And, and granted, you know, Vader was had a hand of blowing up Alderaan, and so maybe she never forgives him, regardless if he comes back or not. Yeah. Right, and maybe that's maybe that's what pushes him over the edge. But cl clearly, clearly, Snoke or somebody c catches on to that that. You know, to idolize the Vader, like when he's sitting in the room and he's, you know, with the mask, show me the dark side. So something's happened before where he's, you know, he looks up to his grandfather as as an actual father figure. Right. Um, but anyway, that more than the weakling solo. Yeah. Yeah, to purge the to purge the solo out to to become the pure Skywalker. You know the pure like his his so would grandfather. So kill his mother as well as his father. See that I think would be a lot harder for him because I think he probably thinks his weakness comes from his father, who's not pure. He wasn't. He's not. Wasn't a force user. That's right. So I think it would have been probably harder for him to kill right. his, his father, mother. His father's a muggle. Yeah, pretty much. I don't think. I think there'll be a face off between the two of them. You think Leia? I hope I, not a not a battle, but I, I they will come face to face at some point. I think, yeah. and uh, is Leia going to continue to be in the movies? She, I would assume so. Probably She's in, be a, in the a next limited. One, I would assume maybe yeah. they'll kill her off in the probably next in a limited, a limited role in some capacity. I don't know. Maybe if she dies, I don't know that it would be in the second act, but maybe, maybe in the for a third, I, I a third movie, but. Anyway, I every interaction though between him and Ray was fantastic, but, but displaying the two the two sides of the new this f nascent force the that's brown, coming. Out. The tan versus the black. I mean, that's, that's what it was. It was that tan, that neutral color palette scheme versus the red and the black palette scheme. I mean, every, even even just the. The way that the lighting was done within the scenes, you could yeah. tell who was in control by, by the by the lighting and the tone of the color and the uh, on yeah. the frame. So anyway, what about you? Um, favorite character, favorite highlight. I like I liked Ray. I think uh, I I like her character. She you know she comes. She has that Luke mentality. I mean it. I mean the. I mean the movie as. 
it was stated already in, in a comment that you know that we heard that it is a it is a strong throwback to the new a new hope. I oh mean, yeah. I mean it is it is almost a retelling of that, but but in a in a been a fantastic way, I think. Mm. Um I, I don't see why you wouldn't do that to link, you know, everything together. I think it's done right. But um I like Ray's character. I really like Jakku. I, I like that planet. Mm-hmm. I liked I like the stuff that they did with it. You know, having yeah. her live inside of an ad ad. That was that was awesome, you know. And then uh and then the her flying the Falcon. That was great. Oh, the garbage thing. Oh, that was so funny. What a fantastic way to introduce that ship. I the mean, garbage. what a fantastic way. I mean, that it it that pulled so much. I mean that that little scene pulled so much from the from the original trilogy, mm-hmm. you know, to just to just say that about that ship, and then it be a fantastic ship. I mean that well, is. I mean they, they had a compressor in the in the uh, throttle body. There's no way that it's going to be a fantastic ship. But I mean, it was just a, such a, a, it's a overload the hyper great throwback. I mean, the little things like that that are were done so well, yet like kind of almost subtle. It was. Well, as soon as as soon as you saw the Falcon, everybody in the theater was like, like it was its own character, and people oh, yeah, were like yeah. cheering for you yeah. know a ship. Yeah. So, I mean, and then the the scene, I that whole okay, let's. I think that might be one of my favorite scenes. Is a scene where you know um, Han and Chewie show back up, but the scene between the two like pirate groups, I guess, or what they are, um, that, that Han was dealing with at that time. Mm-hmm. That whole fight scene within within the uh, the Falcon was really really good. I thought. I mean, because it really showed Han's character coming back. You know, the the argument that he has with Chewbacca right there, where he says he talks him way out of every time, you know, and stuff like that. That was really, really good. I mean, yeah. it was a good, a good toss back and forth between the the older characters and the newer characters. That was good. Maz Kanata, the whole the whole scene with her, I thought was fantastic because um, it it was fun and it also had a lot of enlightenment in the in that scene. Yeah. So those are those are two main scenes that i like i'm gonna have to go watch it again of course i mean there's probably a lot of stuff that i'm forgetting that i want to talk was about. was there any s- scene in there because i had two that just punched you in the gut like close to tear kind of moments my i'll just say my two were i don't know why but when han first sees leia when she yeah. walks out yeah i don't you know and i don't consider myself to be you know you know, like Leia was, but just there was something when she walks out and he sees her, like those that scene of those two coming together, and then the last scene with Luke. I mean, Mark Hamill did so much acting with a minute, twenty second, thirty second look, like all of the things that you could, the whole story that he was telling. By just saying absolutely nothing. And he looked freaking absolutely phenomenal. Like, just absolutely amazing. Exactly how he should. He looked exactly how... Exactly. And and a, a, a friend of ours, Rus, uh, Rusty, he he made the comment he's he will be a gray Jedi. Which, you know, kind of pulls from that. You know, not, not completely... He kind of skirts the the path of the dark side, right? You right. know, and maybe, and, and I would be surprised if maybe that's ha- kind of how Luke's character is. Maybe he's not, you know, maybe he's ninety nine percent light, but he's he's had to kind of s- skirt and survive. And maybe the the devastation that happened with Kylo, maybe that you know has 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 tainted or or tested him, you know, a little a little bit and you know, he feels some disappointment there and you you kind of see that wear on him, but I mean, just the the ending uh, just absolutely fantastic. What well, yeah, it it leads you into so many thoughts of of how it's going to go. I think I mean, I guess we could go into some predictions of how the next movie will go. I think it's going to be a, a large it's going to be it's going to be empire. I mean it's going to be Luke training Rey and there's going to be a lot of 
Dagobah-esque situations that they're going to run into. That's that's going to happen, you know, on a completely different style of planet. I think if they stay there um, to do it, I, that's what I kind of wanted. I kind of wanted to hear that he was on Dagobah, <laughs> just to be all like, like to have someone go, ah, Dagobah. Dang it, we didn't even think about that, you know, like one of those situations. Yeah. Like him hiding in the in there for some reason. Like that would have been it would have been too obvious, but it it would have been funny. So Yeah. Did you have any Why why did R2 D2 wake up when he woke up? Because Han died? I don't know. That was that was one thing I didn't really I didn't really was yeah, because BB-8 he was in BB-8 low power tried mode. To, BB-8 tried to wake him up. Right. He, he was in low power it. mode ever since Luke left. Right. Which which was needless to say, again, these are like plot holes. Things we're going to pick apart. Why does BB-8 need to be told this when he's been a, he's been there forever because he's posed droid? But uh, I guess that was more for our benefit than BB-8's benefit. What do you mean? Because like BB-8 shows up, he's Poe's droid. Poe's right. the greatest pilot the Resistance has. Right. I'm sure he's in and around General Organa all the time. So General Organa's droids then have to explain what's going on with R2-D2 when he's been in low power mode forever to a droid that's been around forever. So I was kind of like, I was kind of like, this is shoddy storytelling here. Yeah. Guys. There needs to be a Ray needs to discover R2 and then C-3PO tell Ray this, not BB-8. But yeah. They wanted the little droid by the big uh, droid. But, again, um, inter- introduction of a of a an offset character. The C three PO interruption was fantastic. Y- yeah, I mean, what, the way we were introduced. Tr- the, the same way you're introdu- you introduced the Millennium Falcon. The same thing. The perfect way to introduce a guy, have him interrupt such a, a the key perfect moment. moment. Yeah, yeah, to have him just kind of step in and just. Yeah, you know. that was that was that was excellent. But I I agree the. The R two thing was, I, I I almost felt like they were they were if they struggled well, he was it was covered if they he struggled at all up. though if they struggled at all though it was like but like BB went to him and and, and yeah. uncovered him like it was like uh, I that to me poke him was again. the the biggest struggle from the maybe the writing perspective was okay we've we've put out now that Luke's just vanished. Which is like the first line of yeah. the, the scroll. Luke Skywalker yeah. has, has, disappeared. has disappeared or has vanished or whatever. So, so he. How do we? Okay, first of all, how did R two has nine of the missing pieces, and then BB Max von Sydow, Max von well, Sydow has the, the last the, piece. Here, here could be a reason why he hasn't went to him yet. He could have known he was there, but no one has talked about Luke Skywalker. No one has been talking about Luke that's until they been, found the other piece. That's been Leia's and, goal forever. But until they found that other piece. But she's so, been looking for all the other pieces. But, okay, but they got is, the piece. Maybe, maybe because the BB-8 the knew. Why wouldn't up? BB-8 know? And then C-3PO being C-3PO just kind of explains it. But he knew that he had the piece, and that's what he was trying to do. Hey, wake up. Hey, I've got it. Let's let's do this kind of thing. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Like you I said, that, that was not, not to pick pick holes through things but that was one of the few things that i they they i don't know if they str- don't want to say struggled but you know how do you introduce the character they're probably like what should we do with with r2 and how do we get this map together i, I don't know i just i mean have they been on that base a long time like is well, that really no, no, but i think i think that's it i think it's that he he got the piece. That's the first time he knew where R2 was now that he had that piece because that was the first time that they probably had an interaction once he got the piece. He went to go wake him up. Hey, wake up. The C-3PO ex- explanation had to be there because we had to understand why R2 was in the situation that he was, but him coming up and the same way R2 always has those things where he's doing these things that no one really knows why he's doing it other than R2, you know? Yeah. He's he's always doing he, the reason he wanted to go to you know towards the, the certain Rocky, way yeah the, the reason that he wanted to go the certain way on Tatooine no one knew other than him why he had to go that way because you know like but the thing right but so you know same idea I don't know yeah. how many times did people hold hands in this movie well twice for Ray and three times Finn. for them because three she, times he grabbed her hand twice then finally she grabbed his oh, oh the the hand holding yeah, yeah. and then there was, that was funny there was lots of hand holding yeah may the force be with you was only yeah. once. 
said once, which I think that's what we said either once or twice. I thought it was going to be more than that. I think I went high on that one, but um, it it is interesting. So we know we we know the republic exists. Used right? to at least five of the, for five of the worlds it used to. Yeah, that's true. Well, they only blew up that one. They only blew up part of one system. They well, blew up a whole system. No, they they bl- that was Maz Kanata's system. Oh, okay. And they said we're next, so they blew up like five planets in what? her system. What a powerful... Let's talk about that for a second. What a powerful, powerful... We had it wrong, though. What? We had it wrong. At least in my my opinion of what was going to happen, we had it wrong. I thought thought it was coming from the ship, I thought the Death Star... I thought the the, the super weapon was going to basically shoot uh, the star, like our sun. Right. And then the explosion of our sun would kill all the planets within our solar system. But they technically, they do kill a sun. Yeah, they they do. They kill the sun of the system that it's in. So that's how they get the name Star Killer, is they kill a star to power that weapon and then fire the energy of that weapon into a system with... I mean, they can target multiple planets. You know, what was awesome is that when it blew up at the end... The planet turned into a star because it had all that yeah. power. Yeah, I mean, I, it, I'm surprised. I didn't think that they would r- blow it up again. Like go that. Yeah, that was one of our prop bets, dude. That's yeah. one of the things I asked. I didn't. I really didn't think that they would go completely recycle that aspect. I mean, it's fine that they did, um, but I thought that I thought that they would disable the planet. And you know maybe limp it away to use it as as a, still a looming threat maybe later on, but you know it's hey, they rebuild it in the, the originals. Why can they come up with it again? You so, know? but but the the weapon itself though, I it's hard to it, that was one other complaint I had was trying to get the the juxtaposition of what distances are we talking because it's like is is the star killer in a completely different galaxy firing this weapon solar system or or a completely different solar system firing it across you know through the middle of space or did it kill the star you think if it was killing the star of maz Kanata's system they would have noticed the sun slowly I, I don't i don't think it's maz Kanata's system First off, well, I'm just using that as a name. All right, whatever the solar system that her planet resided in, they're watching. They see the streak come across the sky, and then four or five of the other planets yeah. explode. So, and they then they're like, "We're next." That was the Star Killer base. We're next. <laughs> if it would have sucked the energy out of the star that her planet utilizes you think that they would have noticed that so that was one thing they really didn't explain was just how far can this thing actually shoot i think it was shooting across solar i think essentially the beams that they were shooting were going into hyperspace going so fast and 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 plowing through another planet that i mean because at first i was like are they shooting coruscant I mean, that's what I, I thought too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was like, Jesus. I mean, that's that is the ultimate way. It's like firing across the, in, the entire galaxy. Yeah. You know. So. Um, well, hyperspace got a whole lot easier in the last thirty years. I mean, it is a little bit more like busting crops, uh, dusting crops. Yeah, they're taking to. off. We can in, we can enter hyperspace while parked in a hangar. Hey, yeah. He, he said he'd never done it before. And, he didn't ask and, if he could do it until after he tried. And then we could exit hyperspace within the solar system of another planet. On the planet, yeah. I mean, it's not like not like micro calibrations. Like, like a matter of hundreds of seconds are going to work. It's going to be like, all right, we're there. Let's shut it down. Because at any point here, I'm going to smoke the planet. So, yeah, I'm not just watching like a ticker go. It's not even automatic. It's I still have to pull the lever and pull it down at the exact right time that I'm, you know. Yeah. Traveling faster than the speed of light, but landing exactly where I need to. It's some of that science fiction stuff was immediately like, okay, come on, guys. Yeah, we did, did, like. I don't need that much. I don't need that much. I it didn't kill anything for me. No, it was. I mean, again, these are well, the these I, are the the small I, well, I little. I think part of that was. I, I mean, the reason why it seems okay is because of the 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 tank that we see that the the Millennium Falcon actually is. Thanks to the scene with Finn and Ray when they take off. Yeah. I mean, they're beating that thing against yeah. the ground. They're flying through sand. Yeah, yeah. And it's holding up to it. So. And then it flies through all those trees. 
I can't yeah. pull up. They'll see us. Yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, again, these these are minor things yeah. of of you know questions that we have and right. you know and and obviously in in a galactic fantasy you're there're going to be things that you just can't explain you don't have time to explain away the physics of how the the super weapon works and things like that you know i i uh i mean it doesn't detract from the movie they're just some little little well the thing is is i think i think what what sort of is, is difficult or, or what I look forward to now is now we can finally be made aware. Like all this extra publication, all this extra mm -hmm. uh, extra canon that is out there, that those books can now start to come out. The plot's yeah. out, the, the secret's out, so now we can start flushing the, out this universe. The first thing that I said to somebody when we got done with the movie was, they said, well, what do you think? I said, how you feel is what, what I was asked. And I said, to be honest... The, the feeling I have right now is relief. Yeah. Like yeah. it was almost like a, like I could exhale and like just breathe again and just like, just, it was an, a, a sign of relief to know what is coming. It's going to be good. You know, that this was good. Every, I, I'm completely in trust. Disney owns my life right now and I think they will in for a well, long okay. time. Well, can I? Because I was thinking about this a little bit as soon as the movie was over. Because I really just kind of sat there quietly, I was trying to sort of process this within my side of my head. It, it, it's a movie. Yeah. It, it's a movie. Um, and, and I, I was trying to think like the Marvel MCU, right, has really come at these comic book sci-fi movies in a very formulaic approach. Right? Uh -huh. I mean, they sort of have, they know the buttons to hit. Yeah. And, and and it's just a matter of getting those in the right ratio that makes a movie good versus great and good versus eh, not so great. Um, I think Disney has learned a tremendous amount from their time spent in the MCU. And I think all the Star Wars things is going to come forward are going to be at bottom line good. Yeah. The the difference is is are they going to hit the buttons in the right sequence in the right orders to make them great? Um, this movie was phenomenal. It was great. It was better than any Marvel movie that has come out. And I'm not saying that as a Star Wars buff, uh, but I think it hit the buttons in the right order in the right sequence that it really kept us going. Kept, and we, I was always looking forward to see what's coming next, but I was also sad to see what I was in disappear or move on. Um, I just, like, words are not going to do this justice for mm, a little yeah. bit. And I think it's an experience that I hope that everybody that's listening has an opportunity to share. Um, I would hope they've already seen it if yeah. they made it this far. Well, I'm, I'm saying just this experience of being able to go through this movie and pick up in this world, because it honestly... This is the way that I think we're you're gonna feel because relief was a huge thing that I felt mm. and almost exhaustion. Yeah. Uh, afterwards of, of of waiting and sort of going through this, is that that we're gonna be left with lots and lots and lots of questions, and we're also gonna be left with the the need of patience, the lesson of patience, because we're not gonna get every question answered that we want to have answered. And we're not going to get every story that we want to be told. Like, I want to know how Han Solo got that ship stolen. And I know the path of ownership. Ray goes through it quickly. But those names mean absolutely nothing to me. Yeah. Uh, and I want that to be fleshed out. I want that to be a movie. I want that to be a, a book. I want that to be a miniseries. But right now, it's just not. No. And I don't know when it ever will be. Um, so it, it is a really weird sort of place to be. In Star Wars, where we just received all the news we're going to receive, like we've gotten really good over the last year of you know since last Thanksgiving of watching, getting like a two minute trailer every so often, and having something to to glean from and learn from and, and go yeah. off of. And now we've got we ate it all. We sat at the table and we ate everything. And now our body's going to go into starvation mode again a little bit. I mean, there's going to be a Star it's Wars gonna, movie once, uh, once every year. It's going to go fast. Year. No, it because uh, we've got a year until Rogue, and right. then we've only got six months until Episode Eight. I know, but I'm I'm, I'm not saying it's not going to be you know it's not going to seem fast. But I'm just saying like 
we're not going to get the answers to the questions that may, we may right. be looking for. We're going to get the answers to the questions that, that that are answered in the next movie. And I think I think I think more time is going to pass between seven and eight. I think more time is going to pass. I, I mean, she is she's there. She's safe. Uh, a you, uh, a father daughter relationship. Do you think it's going to be years to the past? I think I think I think years would not be. I think we're going to come back to this, and Finn is going to be the big deal that he was claiming to be at the beginning of this movie. I think that'll be an interesting character arc for them. And I think him and 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 Poe are, are basically going to be teammates at this point. Yeah, I think you'll see a team up between them. And you're going to have Ray with her training. You're going to have uh, Kylo going with to his be with his training with to complete his training with Snoke. But I don't think we're going to get necessarily a, a, a Dagobah scene. I think I think if we get a Dagobah scene, I could see almost the first movie opening up and she's marching up those steps or yeah. running up those steps again. Yeah. Not with Luke on her back in the background. So do you think you think we're going to come? So you think we're going to come into the movie? The train. A lot of the training has already happened. I think a lot of that part's going to be happening because we're sort of a reset period. The first order has to reset. They lost their base. They lost all their troops. Yeah. They lost. I mean. Snoke said, "Get it has Kylo." Has to strike back. Kylo has to come back. You know, grab Kylo and bring him to me. I must complete his training. Right. I mean, that was a huge step for him to to kill his well, father. Well, don't, don't. I mean, you could. I could see a, a juxta, what, jux, juxtaposition uh, on uh, on showing Ray being trained by by Luke. And but I then, think that's going to take some convincing within itself. But what I'm saying is, is to to show that and then show. To show Ren being trained at the same time, kind of having these two two trainings happening happening, I don't know. I just think the training. Yeah. I, if so, there will be a mirroring of it. I think she's going to have to prove, and and she has a little bit in this movie already that she has a stronger form. She has a stronger grasp of the Force and what it means to be a Jedi than Luke did by the time Return of the Jedi came around. Right. Well, I she, mean, she, yeah, she... She would she, stop, and, and you would see her take that breath. And I thought those moments were phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Because it was just a matter of her saying, this is my path to the Force. This is where my power lies. She clearly has a much... She's much more like Anakin in that she nascently has that ability more so than like a, than like Luke did you know but she probably she started earlier too i mean if she was at the temple and was being trained by Luke then i, I just think that uh, there has to be something in there that would keep her from remembering that because i i, I know a few, few four year olds and i can't imagine that they would forget everything up to this point so do you think Luke put a some sort of training bolt on her brain you yeah know, essentially <laughs> Yeah. But that means that that's got to come off too, and I felt like maybe that would be too easy for that to have popped off during that, during that assault. Yeah, and I mean, and maybe it wasn't Luke that dropped her off, but I still feel that it, I think that makes the most sense is that he's the one that. I just think it's very you know strange this... that Max van Sydow is there and he has a key to Luke's. Then and he says, you know, this should have been done a long time ago. Right. I just kind of thought, or maybe the... he's the one that dropped her off. I thought of something that's leading and me he, away from that. And, you know, I, but she would have surely remembered who it was that she, right. she said, uh, she says when he says Luke Skywalker and who says it? Han says it. And, yeah. and she says, He's I real. thought he was, was a, a myth. myth. Yeah. Hmm. That kind of is taking I, away the I, thought of her being. But I feel like that that has to be that way because if anybody knows that she knows I mean, any. I mean, it's it's a Superman's. It's it's Clark Kent. If you know that that's Superman's kid, you're going to grab that person and hold them hostage to make Superman come and fight you. And if they're truly looking for, I mean, even Leia would have done that at this point. Yeah, she would have got Ray and been like, "You need to take me to your dad." If, if anybody it just, knows that, it makes me wonder. I, I guess I'm trying to figure out. Maybe were maybe, there were maybe, there other maybe her and Luke. Maybe the mother and Luke get together. The mother is the one who leaves her there. The mother leaves her there to go tell Luke that he has a daughter, and she gets caught up in that massacre, and the mother is killed and never has a chance well, to come I'm back. Well, I'm trying to figure out, because in the, in the flashback scene, the Knights of Wren are surrounded by lots of dead bodies. Lots of them. So does that mean were there lots of young now, now, hold Jedi on. there? Was he training multiple 
Is she pulling that from her memory, or is she getting that from the lightsaber as Luke's memories? But Luke would not have had the lightsaber at that time. Luke already has his green lightsaber. That's a good point. Yeah, they ha- that has to be her memories because the lightsaber was not there. The lightsaber was in the trash bin in the Bespin Tower after Empire. Yeah. But we, again, we don't know what we don't know how she got it, how Maz Kanata got it. We don't she know. She's had it for ages. I don't know, man. This is, we're we're now. Yeah. I mean, let's just. We're now talking about a movie that's exactly two years what, away. Yeah. We're in the same position we were two years ago. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. It, yeah. We we learned some things and we got to eat at the table tonight, but we're going to be left with just more questions and and, and another lesson in patience. Right. And we're and this things. As somebody who's read so much Star Wars and honestly has had their life revolve around the first three movies. Yeah. I, I cannot. It is such an uncomfortable place to be to not know. Because I, I felt really confident going into this movie that I was going to get the story. That I that I understood what was happening. That I that I could sort of see who the characters were based on my, you know, based on what I've read before and based on just what I consider good storytelling. I felt like I saw the movie that I was going to see. Like, I knew that the story was going to come. We, we got but the now good, I'm completely in left field We've got again. the solid, we got a but solid introduction, but we're left with the big question of what in the hell, the central question of what in the hell happened after Return of the Jedi with... With Luke and, and that's, the, that's, I mean, that's going to be explained. That story's never going to be told. What? Why you would th- that not you, be okay. told? All right, you think think Luke's going to sit down on the couch with her now, and just like Obi Wan told Luke a, a large line of lies about what actually happened. No, I think I think we will get we will get stuff. We well, will get okay. things through the movie. It makes me wonder. It makes me wonder a little bit if Leia doesn't know something. Because if the whole galaxy, if she, the whole resistance has been looking for Luke forever, why would she send Ray to go find him? Out of all of the, out of all of the people, it's her right. brother. Yeah, out of all of knows, them, because she knows that she, she has the Force. Does yeah, she, I, I would say she that has, part of it. She knows that she has those Jedi skills. She might not know that they're. The How relation. does she know other than? Well, why wouldn't she know? She has. She can feel those things. Right. Well, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that you're just Got saying you Leia. There, Leia can sense. She can sense that Ray has the Force. Yeah, I think. I think her and Han both know who Ray was. Yeah, I mean they. They never. They. They look at her. Like See, very... I felt. I felt a little bit of that the minute that he offered her the job. Yeah. Like when he was offering the job. Like I know we're supposed to leave to... you there, and I know we're not supposed to actually do this because going to put a target on your back. And I know this isn't what Luke would want, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm Han Solo. And, and I lost my son, and so I feel like I need to take yeah. care of my niece. Yeah. So it's looking more like maybe he does have a daughter. I, I don't know. It, it Part of me finds it hard to think that he would have. Luke would not have known. What's that? Luke would not have known that he's supposed to avoid love and avoid attachment and avoid family and avoid avoid. That's true. I mean, he would not have known. Those well, things. you would. You well, would we think don't Yoda would have. He could still be talking to Obi Wan. Yeah. <sighs> That's you, the other thing. He can he can communicate with Obi Wan and Yoda still. If he needs to, they can. Return of the Jedi. They were there, and that felt like a send off. That felt like a, yeah. That felt like a you 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 completed the arc. You've really because that's why Luke, like heir to the Luke, empire was so. Luke good. has a whole conversation with Ben in Jedi. Yeah, but he sits down and talks to him. Right, but then at the end in the Ewoks and Anakin joins them. That's goodbye. You have mm. you have closed this arc. You have atoned for our mistakes because that's what it is. Okay, if that closed it, then. Hayden Christensen's not going to be in the next movies. I, I why would he show up then? I I don't if think Ben can't show up. Then why wouldn't why would why would Vader? Because I think Snoke is going to take the form. Oh, so it's not going to be them. Well, it's not going to be Hayden Christensen. It's not going to be Anakin Skywalker. Because, like I said, if it's Anakin Skywalker, he's going to say, "You're dumb, Ben. You're done. You, the, the, I chose the wrong path. You need to listen to my son." Right. 
So I don't think it's going to be actually Anakin at any point. Yeah, I, I. It was really good. It was really good. It was phenomenal. I'm probably going to go see the the, the death scene. They did excellent with the death scene. I mean, uh, just. Uh, it, was, it was excellent. You said, you said something about handing off. This is a great handoff movie. And I, I, in my mind, I just keep thinking of how many times something was... Like, they kept putting their hands in each other's hands. They kept passing the lightsaber from one hand to another. Uh, she, kept, Maz Kanata just, like, was rubbing her hands at one point. They, like, there were so many, like, hand... Like, this is a yeah, handoff. this is a handoff. I'm handing yeah. off the Millennium Falcon. I'm handing off my, my co-pilot. We want you to come and I'll hand it off to you. And And... No. Here, I'm handing you this you gun. You are looking I'm way you this. too into that. I think. Well, I just think it's. I think it's very strange that 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 it happened. There, I so mean, much. there was a lot of symbolism in, in that. I mean, I can I can see that. But the one thing is, though, is we didn't see in what the one trailer the hand off the lightsaber that looks like it was been given from some tattooed type hands to Leia. Didn't see that in the movie. I think there was a lot, lot in the trailer that we didn't see. We didn't see the scene where he shoot throws down no. and the so slow, the, the slow two shot, yeah. like when he lights his lightsaber. So those may be some that cut scenes or or something. Well, I, uh, John Boyega came out and said that they filmed a lot of stuff that they knew was going to be in a trailer that maybe not was. In yeah, there. right. That first, <laughs> I know we talked about this how how that first scene. You know, with John Boyega being the first shot of the trailers, like with the music behind it. Yeah. Nowhere, nowhere as intense as the trailer shot. You know, no. I mean, it was no, like that, that is like the end of the intensity. It's like now yeah. it's quiet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just funny. It was. I was. I was waiting for that scene. It was like, oh, oh, whoa, you know. And it was like, oh. And I'm. That, that I'm so glad to see. I love the the stormtroopers that. They're ac- actually like menacing and intimidating, and you get that from that. They're not just a bunch of you know bureaucratic bumbling, yeah. you know, kind of Barney fifes. Right. You know that these guys actually have been trained and are lethal fighters. So I I really really like that aspect, um, and just the look and the feel of the First Order in general. Very, very harsh, you know, way harsher than the Empire, militaristic. So, you know, fan- fantastic. I was a little disappointed with the sound at the beginning of the movie. The sound? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I look at that stuff probably more than you guys do, but it's like... Just the sound. It took the movie about a half hour to really build into. Well, that was that was one thing that I'd heard a couple other people say is that they, the sound and the musical score was not as impactful. I thought the score was fantastic. Was not as impactful. But at the same time, I was pulling. I was listening to it, wanting to hear, hear the score i wanted to hear the themes come through yeah. i wanted to hear those themes, and i caught them every so i think often. there was so much you did not have you didn't have like the iconic luke against the 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 dual sunset type moments where it's just purely music i didn't feel like you got any extended moments like that where it was just a powerful theme that lasted for uninterrupted for you know five or six seconds to, to pull that in or the introduction of the Imperial March like you get in um, Empire. So, and, and it's not that the, the score was not good. It's just, I think that's what was missing was having a few of those big uninterrupted scenes like that with a new theme. Um, wow. I looked up cause I want, I want to find the score. Yeah. And I can't, I can't find it. And I just, uh, Pulled up the Pirate Bay just to take a look here. Yeah. Um, the movie for a cam shot, of course. Um, Cedars, um, 14,589 people seeding that file, meaning they have parts of it and they're trying to, to give it to other people. And then Leechers, uh, 666 uh, Leech people, meaning they're pulling the file but not giving it. So... Um, it's already out there <laughs> to get, but uh, yeah, I want to. I want to listen to the soundtrack and uh, j- 
just, just straight. And that's uh, one. Honestly, I would have no problem doing that for because I know that as soon as the copyrighted version is available, I'm still going to buy that anyway. It should be available now. Actually, I think it came. Actually, I think it gets released tomorrow. What do you mean? The the soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack. Oh no 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 no! no. I was talking about the the film. Oh, I yeah. thought you were, that weren't you talking about the film? No. He, yes. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about the the film. Yeah, it had fourteen thousand uh, seeds. Oh, I thought you were talking about the soundtrack. The toy. No, I'm trying to find the soundtrack. Oh, the actual film had been leaked, and yeah, Pirate Bay already had a cam shot of it. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, but that's yeah. like I said, that's one that's going to make its money back, and I have no problem seeing it in the theater, and I will yeah. buy it as soon as it's now, available. And- now, see, I'm just, I'm still anxious to see how whoa Hello. i'm anxious to see how much money because i read a report yesterday that they were saying pre-sale was already over a hundred million dollars so I'll, I'll be anxious to see where we're at next monday uh on what the final tally will be i don't and i don't know if there's any news so far as to what uh money's looking like but i mean you're going to get you, you regardless you're going to get your money's worth. I oh. mean this is this movie just I'd say even for a casual moviegoer it's worth at least going twice. Yeah. At least going twice. Yeah. Um that's fake by the way. I'm sorry. 14,000 people have gotten some sort of virus, I'll tell you that. Okay. Yeah, the, I would have com- figured. the comments are pretty strong on saying that it is fake and it is not a uh is not a clean file. Yeah. So don't go downloading that. Just well, go pay. Go pay the money. Shouldn't in the first place. Go but. pay the money. You know I mean, come on, go pay the money for it. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'll buy it right away. Oh, you, you know wait, what I might do? Pack. You know what I might do? I might buy it digitally, and then wait for the three pack when the movies are done to actually buy. Do you realize? Do you realize our kids will be almost in high school by that point? Hell, to be honest. It will probably, with the deal that Disney's made with Netflix, it'll probably be streaming. When when is that deal coming into place? It's our, it already has. But the, ra- the original Star Star Wars is not on Netflix. Yet. It, it it will, but it it's it's a slow moving process where they're gaining rights on certain things because uh, Stars owns the rights to to display those right now. Yeah, Star- are they on Stars? I think so. I don't know, but but. Stars and I think um, TNT or I got or about FX. Ha- I got about half of them already on Amazon digital download. Like yeah. I've already bought them on Amazon digitally, uh, but I have the the original three on Blu-ray and see DVD and and, and I do too. And I watched <laughs> and to be honest with you, I watched it on DVD last night. I watched Jedi on DVD and not Blu-ray. And the problem, the reason is, again, technical side of it. Sound. The sound is se- is only option that you have on the Blu-ray is 7.1. Yep. And it messes it. It messes it's with a 5.1. On a 5.1 system, it's not good. Hmm. It's well, not good on at all. a zero system, it's well, you terrible. Well, you need to go in and you need to change it to two-channel stereo. But it doesn't It doesn't give you the option. It's, 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 it's uh, 6.1 or 7.1 and then, or 5.1 English Descriptive Services. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear stormtroopers are now walking down the star. Right, the, right. The hallway. But okay. no, like the audio is atrocious. Yeah. Okay, guys. It's been an hour. Yeah. It's been, I got to work in the morning. You, you, got, you got any final, any final uh, thoughts? <laughs> Go see it. Go see it. And if, well, you ha- if you're listening right now and you didn't, sorry. Um, we warned you. Yeah, uh, I go don't see it again. Go see it again. Call me. I'm gonna go see it again. I might go see it on Sunday. I, I will probably see go see it either tomorrow or Saturday. Yeah. So, it's uh, it's worth it. It's it is it is worth it. This, I mean, really, it is amazing. Share what you think of Star Wars Episode Seven on facebookcom slash Buffalo Brotherhood. You can tweet the show at Bo- at Bobcast Nation. Excuse me, at Bobcast Nation. Tweet me at Buffalo Cast. Mikey at Fu Man Two Two O's Two Ends of the Number Two, and Doug at Refried Evil. Go see Star Wars. May the Force be with you.